All right, everyone, this is gonna be the fastest protein assay tutorial you've ever seen. So this is the Thermo BCA protein assay. Uh, I think it's about $100 to purchase it. Here is the part A of the solution. And then part B of the solution is this. So this is a this is toxic, so if when you dispose of it, you need to tie it up in a bag and double bag it essentially uh, and throw it away. It's not extremely toxic, but it's not something that you want to pour down this drain or pour in your backyard or anything like that. So in order to run the assay, first what you need to do is prepare your standards. And you do that by using these albumin standards. So these come with the kit. Uh, this is BSA, bovine serum albumin. It's a commonly used standard for protein assay. And it comes in a little glass ampule. And there's no reason to be afraid of these. These are actually really cool. There's one milliliter of two grams per liter BSA, bovine serum albumin, in each of these glass ampules. And literally all you do is break the ampule. So you can wrap it up in a paper towel uh, and break it within the paper towel to prevent uh, any glass from getting in your hands. Uh, but, you know, they, they design these so that they don't shatter into a billion pieces. So, so, you know, just confidently break the ampule and you'll get something like this. So here's the glass ampule. This is a whole milliliter. So when I do these assays, I only end up needing uh, about 200 microliters from this in order to make all the standards. So, you know, you can put this in a, in a new uh, test tube and close it and save it for later. It does not need to be stored in the refrigerator. Right there, it says store between 15 and 30 degrees C. So that's room temperature. I wouldn't recommend keeping this around for too long. If you're going to do an assay the next day or, or maybe even within the week, then you can save this. Uh, but I have a feeling it degrades after a certain amount of time. Uh, if you plan on storing it for a long period of time, just you know maybe look up how long uh, it takes to expire once the ampule is broken. And so what I've done here is I've prepared a serial dilution. So this tube here has... 2,000 milligrams per liter or 2 grams per liter. So this is just the straight BSA solution. Then I diluted that 50% uh, to 1 gram per liter there and 50% again to 500 milligrams per liter. And you can keep do going down all the way to, I would recommend down to uh, 62 and a half, uh, which is 5 or 6 dilutions, I think. Um, you can go down a little bit further, especially if you have a spectrophotometer, but if you're just doing these measurements by eye, comparing the color by eye, then uh, I, would, I wouldn't recommend doing anything past 62 and a half milligrams per liter. You only need 100 microliters of each sample. So the way that I do this is I'll put 200 milligrams, or sorry, I'll put 200 microliters of BSA into the full strength tube. And then I'll take 100 microliters of that, put it in the next dilution with 100 microliters of water. Then I'll mix that together, take 100 microliters of that, put it in the next dilution with 100 microliters of water, so on and so forth until uh, I'm done with the dilutions. Additionally, if you're measuring something that has anything greater than 2 grams per liter of protein, you'll have to set up serial dilutions as well. So again, the experiment requires 100 microliters of whatever sample you're doing, whether it's the standard or the unknown sample. And then the next step is to take 50 parts of the A solution and one part of the B solution and mix them together. And then you'll put two milliliters of this solution in each of these tubes. So I think it's really convenient to have these two milliliter centrifuge tubes. Most microcentrifuge tubes are only uh, one and a half milliliters. So these have, you know, that deep bottom. So that's nice. You can also do it in test tubes if you want. Um, you don't have to do 50 milliliters of this and one milliliter of this. Uh, I needed 32 milliliters. So I did 32 milliliters of this and 640 microliters of this. It's just, uh, you know, you can just set up a little fraction ratio and solve for X if you need to use a, a smaller volume. So once you start the reaction, you have a couple of options. You can either incubate 
each of the reactions at uh, 30 degrees Celsius, no, sorry, 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, or you can incubate them at room temperature for two hours. And this doesn't have to be, you know, on the dot. You don't, you don't need to do it perfectly uh, exact. But at those time points, uh, it's, those are the suggested times to measure it. So if you let it go a little bit longer, the color change could be a little bit different than what the manufacturer uh, expects. If you're not doing it by eye and you're using a spectrophotometer, you will set it to 560, 562 nanometers. Uh, that's your wavelength for the spectrophotometer. Um, honestly, you know, if, if you're just trying to get an estimate, doing it by eye is, is plenty good. Uh, so I'll come back once I've put two milliliters of this uh, reaction into each of my sample tubes. All right, so here's the assay at time zero. Okay, so here are the standards on the back. So from right to left, you have two grams, one gram, 500 milligrams, and 250 milligrams per liter. Again, this is time zero, so the color change hasn't happened much yet. Uh, you can see I've also done dilutions from left to right of the unknown samples. And the, the color change is already really cool, but after two hours, we'll have a really clear view of you know the protein content of all of these samples. So we'll be right back. All right, so this is what happens after two hours and the reaction is completed. And so what I've done here is I've organized the samples from darkest to lightest without looking at the labels. And so this is sort of a way that I blind myself so I don't know, you know which samples are which and I don't have any bias of, oh, well, you know, my sample may have done better so I should put it further up or whatever. So then once it's ordered, then what I'll do is I'll look at the labels of each sample. And so, for example, this is the two gram per liter sample, the standard. And then this is one of my samples. And so I'm thinking this is probably greater than two grams per liter. Here's another one of my samples. And here's a standard. So this is one gram per liter. This is two grams per liter, and then this is my sample. So my sample is probably between one and two grams per liter. And then so you can go down the line and do that. You, you really can't say anything more than, you know, it's between one and two grams per liter. You probably shouldn't say it's 1.5 grams per liter because you don't know that. that you don't have that kind of resolution. But anyway, that's the protein assay kit. All you really need is the kit itself from Thermo, a P1000 pipette, and some pipette tips. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the description below. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thanks for watching. Bye.